What would you guys do if um, you found out that the stuff you guys are doing with your cell phones and everything does cause cancer? Ask yourself that question. Like, you know tobacco causes cancer. Why do you do it? Like, we use social media because we get the pleasure out of it. If it causes cancer, it causes cancer. You guys smoke and it causes cancer. You guys still smoke. It's just you're willing to take that risk. It's like... When you think of the word addiction, you automatically think of like cigarettes and alcohol and drugs. Sometimes I think people should sit back in their own lives and think like, you could be addicted to anything. Just something that I think almost hinders your life away and takes away from what your life could be and something that is almost in control of you. I was like 12 and I had my first puff. I didn't like it, hated it. I just did it those couple weeks because they were doing it and I wanted to be cool, so I was like, okay, so I'm gonna smoke. All of a sudden, I'm buying a pack. I'm buying a pack of cigarettes. And then, bam, I'm a smoker. So like I said, it just creeps up on you. That's the worm. It's that little thing in your brain that wants the cigarettes. And if you don't feed it, it's gonna, it's gonna bite you. I'm always used to people, you know, smoking and drinking and all that stuff, being addicted to all that. So for me, you know, the idea of, you know, I'm addicted to going on the internet and talking to people. It just seemed kind of weird to me. Um, <laughs> but after seeing what you guys went through and everything and seeing like, you know, how you guys are so drawn to it and like, it is kind of an addiction. It, well, it is an addiction because you guys keep wanting to do it and stuff. Well, you were crying because you couldn't get on Facebook. I was so. not crying. <laughs> I was not okay, crying. Okay, well, you were on the verge of tears. I actually don't want to say I'm addicted to anything. <laughs> I guess. First step denial. <laughs> I don't know. I think that it does interfere. And I guess you could call that an addiction when you're doing something so much that it interferes with like stuff that you should be doing or like the right path, I guess. I think that's what's cool about this experience that we just went through because um, it kind of made us realize or learn about ourselves. Like we found out that we actually were addicted to like our addictions, you know, and that, and in that we're, we're like trying to do something about it. So. I, I guess I should confess, um, I smoked in 10 days. Yeah, I, I smoked like a whole pack in one night. A whole yeah. pack in one night? Pack. Are you trying to get cancer? No. Something? With me, I, I didn't really feel bad for cheating. I guess that makes me feel bad by saying that, but I just didn't, like, I think that I like, went through it in my mind and decided that it was okay. But even that, like, let's say, you know, when we're given a temptation, we always try and make ourselves feel better about it by saying, oh, you know, I only smoked one cigarette, yeah. but you still cheated. You know, I only went on Facebook for 10 seconds, but you still went on it. Yeah. Yeah. But you always try and make yourself feel better. <laughs> and I think that's another part of the addiction is if you give in to your temptations, yeah. you try and make yourself feel better. You rationalize about it. All addictions are the same. Everybody feels like they want it. They all feel like they need it. And really, in reality, you really don't need any of that. Right, but addiction is different too. Like, it's all different. Each, like your addiction, you're like not what you're addicted to, but like your addiction and the way it acts on you, it's it's different for everybody. Like for him, it was nothing. He just whatever. It was not a walk in the park, though. Um, I would just say that I went at it a different way than you guys did. I mean, you can say I took control of it, but and you know. How old are you now? I'm 18. So you've been dipping for two years? Yeah. See, we've been smoking for like, since. But I was smoking five, when I was younger though sure. too. But he used to smoke too. Yeah, I was smoking before I was dipping, so I've been with tobacco for a long time. Yeah, everybody's addiction is different, but everybody can understand like yeah. that feeling. But it's, it's basically the same, just on different levels, and it really depends on you and how you can cope with it and how you can deal with it. Living your days being uncomfortable or like, just going back to that thing where it's the norm and like smoking cigarettes in your car and smoking cigarettes outside and smoking cigarettes at a party, that is your norm and that's what you do with your time and that's your life. And taking away a little piece of your life and changing your whole life has to be ridiculously hard and especially when you're trying to stop smoking for the rest of your life, that's changing a piece of your life for the rest of your life, you know? Like, so I think that gave me an insight on like how you guys feel. It's hard. But you also got to make sure that your friends are with you, though, too. You can, and if they're not, then what kind of friends are they? If your friends are going to sit there and smoke in front of you, then don't hang out with those friends. Find different friends. 
Like because, the, well, yeah, you're shaking your head like that's not a good well, thing. But I mean, Friends aren't like clothes. You can't just change smoking. friends. Well, yeah, but while you're, first, while you're first quitting and stuff, no matter what, the temptation is going to be there. And if you're first, you know, you know those first couple of days where you're sitting there craving the hell out of it. And if your friend's right there smoking in front of you, of course you're going to take a puff off your friend's cigarette. That's your friend. You trust your friend, right? So if I you're think hanging, that's too tough. I it mean, is, though, but... I think a good advice would be, like, but, to... You need a motivator, you know? Like, if you just make it like, oh, I might get cancer in 30 years, it's never going to motivate you to quit. Or if it's like, this could happen to you, that's never going to motivate you. You have to have something like dreams or goals or like examples you want to set to your kids and that you don't want your kids to smoke one day. You have to have like something real, like that hits your heart that's going to tell you not to smoke. Like, it can't just be statistics or facts because that's never going to like change you. <laughs> That's good. Or just like being a tough guy, because not everybody is as tough to just be like, eh, that sucks. Step one is sitting there and telling yourself, you know what, I need to quit. And then step two is to figure out how you're going to do it. Don't ever smoke. That's exactly <laughs> what I tell anybody who wanted to smoke. As soon as you try to quit, it's so much harder. I thought I was never addicted. And I thought I could quit, like at the drop of a hat. I didn't plan on becoming a smoker. Like, but every cigarette that someone gave you, and, and I would say yes to it, it would add on. It, it would like create an addiction in you. Like when I had my first cigarette, I didn't plan, oh yeah, today begins the, the addiction of a lifetime. Not yet, not yet, not yet.